So our closing keynote speaker today is Dutch tech-minded fashion designer Anouk Wiprecht, who combines the latest in science and technology to make fashion an experience that transcends mere appearances. She wants her garments to facilitate and augment the interactions we have with ourselves and our surroundings, and has partnered up with companies such as Intel, Autodesk, Google, Microsoft, Cirque du Soleil, and 3D printing companies to illustrate what a future would look like as we continue to embed technology into what we wear. Please join me in welcoming Anouk Wiprecht to the stage. Thank you. <laughs> Forgot that I still have my phone here. Can I put it safely? So, uh, my name is Anouk Wiprecht. I'm a Dutch fashion tech designer, and I recently moved to, uh, to San Francisco to work and to direct a uh, laboratory here. It's called Codeme Labs, and I'm inviting uh, artists and designers and architects to come play with me within the city. So, that's really excited. And um, what I do myself is, uh, I often say is I make, I, make, um, I make a lot of trouble. So, uh, this is one of my designs that I'm going to talk about later on. What I mainly do is uh, I design, so um, I design and I also travel around a lot. I work a lot from, uh, with the companies that, that, um, that I interfere with. I work for makerspaces, uh, hackerspaces, and I do a lot of collaborations. What I have on me is my laptop, uh, like yeah, soldering station, so technical equipment, a sewing machine. And uh, with that, I create uh, designs. So I do a lot with uh, 3D printing. I do a lot with uh, microcontrollers and a lot with sensors, and I combine them all together. Uh, my background is fashion design, and from a pretty early on age, I got interested in robotics. So uh, this is a mix-up, for example, for the company uh, Audi, which you know as a car company. I created dresses, a collection of dresses that look like their cars. So basically, I hacked into their car. I took out uh, their high power LEDs, which you can see here. It's a dress based on 60 watt high power LEDs. I also took out their parking sensor. So as soon as you come near to these dresses, they start to react. They start to yeah, shine bright. They start to move. And um, with that, I would like to, uh, I wanted to create a different view on uh, like what I normally saw with car shows. You have a lot uh, of car shows in where girls get presented. Uh, for example, they are sort of yeah, short skirted and almost crawling, tigering over the cars. And what I wanted to do with Audi, uh, we wanted to create a really powerful collection in where the girls were the boss, sort of. So this is some, uh, yeah, one of the designs that you, uh, that you can see that was last week in China. And uh, this is some of the development that you can see. Here you can sh see a shield uh, that I'm currently working on with Igor um, Knesvik from Alienology. You can see here a uh, projection map dress, which is playing now in where um, yeah, projections are being mapped upon these dresses that are work walking on the, on the catwalk and being traced. Uh, another project that I'm working on at the moment is um, with Victoria Modesta. She's an, uh, a bionic pop singer. She only has one leg. And instead of seeing that as a disability, we see that a uh, as a place to store electronics and store microcontrollers in. So this is something that's really exciting. We are making an accelerometer-based leg for her in which she can control uh, visualizations and sounds around her. My uh, main research is regarding uh, to, uh, to fashion. I see fashion as a notion of um, expression and of communication. So what I see, if you think of fashion, I see these spaces around us. So the intimate space, the personal space, um, uh, the intimate space, the personal space, the social sp space, and the public space. And I try to see what I can do with that. The other thing what I do is I look at biomimicry and uh, how uh, animals, for example, behave in nature. So this is an octopus, and it's basically pushing out a, a cloud of ink in order to, to dive away. So it's the, the sense of emotion, the sense of uh, shyness or defense. So I created a uh, dress for this. So the, the dress is, um, is equipped with proximity sensors. So as soon as you come into the uh, near proximity of this dress, it starts to put out an, a smoke screen as if you can hide away, as if you can dive away, sort of. The technique that, uh, that I used for, uh, for this dress in collaboration with Niccolo Casassi, he's an Italian architect, and we were trying to figure out um, like how we could create a sort of um, an ongoing smoke cloud around the body. So we uh, used the hip area and we made a spacing there. And um, I used a TPU, so a thermoplastic polyurethane, so the dress itself is, um, is um, also like flexible. So we created a mesh structure in where the, the smoke really could flow out and really could form around the body and stay around the body as, um, as a cloud, sort of. 
So here you can see the, the two, yeah, the two, um, the system, both the back piece as the front piece. The other thing that uh, I'm working on is like um, I work with uh, not only connecting the body to the envir environment regarding to uh, proximity sensors, I also work with wireless biosignals. So this is, for, for example, the things that I'm using. I'm not using them all at the same time, but every dress for me is a case study. So at this moment of time, I have 36 dresses that are all doing something different, that are all combined in a different way to the environment and to the body itself. So I'm working with EEG, I work with uh, pulse, with heart rate, also the heart volume, uh, respiration, so lung volume, accelerometer, place in space, uh, skin conductancy, uh, EMG, temperature, and uh, yeah, location, light, proximity, all this stuff. And uh, what I say, it's really important for me to not always do the same trick, but all the time to combine a different sensor, a different set uh, to the body and to, uh, to my designs. One of the pieces that I do for Intel, so I work in collaboration with Intel a lot. Um, this is where I use their Intel Edison, and I use a design with a little camera in the front. I, um, I recreated um, a an, an headpiece which is doing uh, like a tracking of attention. So I used NeuroSky um, in the beginning to get a sense of what what uh, my model Whitney uh, would be able to, uh, to sense. And as soon as the attention uh, was rising, this little camera in the front of her design went off. So basically, I could measure out where she was, what was happening, uh, if she yeah, sort of met people, or what happened regarding to the spike of her attention. So this is, for example, the headset. And this is a little bit uh, the overview. So the camera sees what is in front of there. The proximity see sensor see uh, who is near her. And then you see uh, some of the data here, the heart rate and, um, and EEG. Again, going back to these spaces, um, also another thing that I'm busy with is uh, sort of the sense of not only using fashion as, as fashion to show off or to exp expose yourself through to communicate, but also using it as a gamifying element. And uh, the next project is pretty important for me uh, because of that notion. I uh, took the idea of this placing this camera on the body and also using the EEG sensors in order to track the attention. When the attention goes up, the, the camera in this unicorn headset is recording whatever is happening in front of, um, in this, this fact, uh, child. I'm working with children on the uh, autism spectrum and also on the ADHD spectrum. And what I wanted to reach out is that they had a gamified or playful um, uh, sort of, yeah, um, uh, uh, kind of uh, therapy, like what normally the EEG, for example, is standing for. And I guess I have it one on the slides here. For example, if you look at, uh, at uh, children being measured regarding to EEG, it's like a lot of, um, it's a lot of electrodes on their face. Um, they are being measured with cameras around them. They're being measured with these medical instruments on their body and on their, on their faces. And it's, yeah, for me, not really a pleasurable thing, sort of. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to use a unicorn horn, which is, of course, magical and amazing, and everybody loves unicorns, and I wanted to create this notion of em embedding the uh, electrodes as um, uh, particularly in the uh, areas of the head that I'm interested in. So I'm using the P300, so I'm using the 1020 system of EEG, and I'm only taking out the P300, so those are six electrodes that I'm using in order to measure the attention. They're placed on the, on the back side of the head. And for my research, I say, like, these are the only places that I need to measure. It's based on an uh, Intel Edison, and instead of, yeah, having this whole head full of electrodes, um, a child actually has a much more, yeah, sort of gamified experience. The other thing is that these kids uh, are able to walk in and choose their own horn and go into this experience themselves, which lets let them be a kid, sort of, instead of uh, letting them be an instrument. So this is something that I wanted to point out regarding to, uh, like, yeah, sort of the element of gamifying fashion, uh, like seeing how medical instruments and the talk, uh, two talks prior here was already also touching upon that. How how you can make it easier? How you can make it more playful? How you can make it more, um, yeah, more admirable in a way. And um, yeah, coming back to the spaces, I'm switching to the to the first design that I um, that I presented. Um, when I walked in. Another of my interests is personal space. 
so the space that we have around the body, um, again, measured out. This is a diagram from Edward T. Hall. And in the 60s, Edward T. Hall was defining the spaces around the body. He's one of the ground layers for the theory of proxemics and the, yeah, the proximity theory, in where he was traveling around a lot. And he saw that different people had different personal spaces. Um, in fact, he was measuring these personal spaces in different cultures, and he was writing them down. So this is one of his diagrams in where you can see the, um, him measuring with a stick uh, around a more intuitive uh, measuring what these spaces could be and what the meters and the feet could be for these spaces. What I tried to do is, uh, from his book, The Hidden Dimension, I took this diagram. And actually, what we can do now, of course, we can measure these things out. Since my designs have these proximity sensors on the body, I am able to not make an uh, intuitive estimate, but I'm really uh, able to uh, measure out these spaces. And I can exactly see how people interfere with my designs as they walk up and as they interact with, uh, with my model or the, the person wearing it. So based on that notion, again, gripping back to nature, this is one uh, of the dresses that came out of, uh, that's out of that research, which is based on personal space. And I have a little movie for you. Time now for the Black Widow edition of Weird Planet. Now, I don't know about you, but some people really have issues with personal space, right? Really? So if you get too close, I would be wearing a dress like this. Take a look. This is a robotic spider dress. Yep, six robotic limbs protrude from a black dress crawling around your body. There are six. We know spiders have eight legs, but it's a dress. Get over it. Yes, <laughs> it's a collaboration between fashion designer Anouk Wiprecht and software engineer Daniel Schatzmeier. It's this wearable dress that's equipped with sensors that interact with the people around you. If they get too close, those legs will come out and just push them away. Yeah, so it's not just weird legs moving around randomly, like if you strap the giant six-legged spider to your back. Hey, I would love to wear that dress at a bar. Yeah, I don't know how that would go over for you, because the people who would come up to talk to you might not be the people that you're most excited to talk to back. I mean, right. you, might, you might really need it for the personal space thing. No, no, exactly. It would be fun. <laughs> so yeah, so this is um, it's actually an um, uh, it's actually an, a project that started based on a game. It's called uh, Limbo. I don't know. Are there people that know the game Limbo? It's a French game. Yeah. Okay, fucking awesome. Great. It's a great game. So if you don't know it, please check it out. It's Limbo, L-E-M-B-O, and uh, like yeah, just download it, play it. Uh, it's a one one player game, or like it's a little boy sh boy shadow boy moving through space. It's awesome. Um, there's also a spider in there, hence the spider dress, and it's very sensorial. Like as the boy little boy moves to the spider, the spider wants to sort of yeah grab to it. It's it's this this notion of like the little boy and the spider that uh, yeah that I started to build this plexiglass spider dress out. Um, so yeah, I was playing that with a friend, and then this started, so that was really, uh, really fun. Um, two years ago, I teamed up with Intel. Uh, one of the first uh, things that we did was uh, like looking at this ad uh, Intel Edison that I had, so their microcontroller, and seeing how I could adapt that to my system. And instead of creating a new dress, I actually wanted to update my spider dress, because that was the most intelligent uh, entity that I had in my collection in, in the family because they're all babies to me. Um, I had the opportunity to create uh, this one um, and um, yeah, to, to put it in uh, 3D with the former version, with a, um, with a plexiglass version. I had like a lot of screws. There's over 200 screws in that design. So after a while, they were sort of yeah, um, like resonating out. So uh, yeah, having to build that in, uh, like in 3D printed and also giving it an update. Uh, this dress also has a respiration sensor. So the model, uh, the wearer, in this case, Whitney, uh, she is able to control the dress um, uh, herself as well. So you can see here proximity sensors under her chin. And as soon as you come into the personal space, it's reacting. So it's not reacting in just one way. It's reacting in 12 ways. So I could program 12 states of behavior within this dress. So as, as you walk up to this dress, it's reacting uh, different, like an animal would do. We're not all the same. So um, again, based on the, the, yeah, the spaces, stepping into the space is causing this effect. <laughs> So this is the notion of um, like yeah, creating these interfaces. I see fashion as an interface, and I want to make that digital. I want to make that interactive. And also having this interface becoming a tool, sort of um, a tool where you can work around with your environment, again, to express and to communicate in new ways. <laughs> So 
So here you can see some of the some of the detail. Here you can see the proximity sensors, and everything is built in there. Then um, the other thing that um, that I really am a really big uh, fan of is not only doing the high uh, high end stuff, sort of not only doing the yeah couture things. What I really love is to do things with makers, with children. Uh, I do a lot with uh, girls and coding. I do a lot with um, with kids and engineering because they're the new they're the new makers, they're the new creators, they're the new architects, they're the new designers of the future. One thing that I really love, and I'm going to point this out. Normally you get a little bit of fan mail, sort of people drawing the spider dress and sending that to you. But these kids were playing with Lego. And uh, Lego is a pretty, I don't know who, I think half of the guys here have been, or the people here have been uh, working with Lego. But it's a pretty hard medium. And these kids actually made a uh, spider dress out of Lego. So I'm just wanting uh, to point, uh, yeah, one thing out that uh, one thing is, yeah, making high-end stuff. And the other thing is, yeah, being busy with the community regarding to open source, regarding to, like, sharing your ideas and, uh, like, yeah, playing around with, um, with different kind of um, yeah attitudes and 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 tools sort of with uh, with a, a bigger group. So one of the things that um, I will show you not now, but you can search it on on the internet. I'm not going to show you the movie. Just a couple more minutes because I only have three uh, minutes left. Uh, one thing that I'm really big uh, fan of is like throwing things online, like not saying like I made this, you know, and you cannot have it. Blah, blah, blah. But instead of sharing, like putting your code online, all that shit, you know, uh, it's really good to do. So. I'm always uh, trying to uh, do this as uh, as much I, as I can. And um, the last thing is always celebrate whatever you're making. Uh, for this, to celebrate, I, uh, I have something special for you guys, because I, um, I actually brought one of my dresses with me. So um, I would like to invite Whitney on the stage. <laughs> Thank you. And what you can see here is a product I did for Cirque du Soleil. Um, I, created, um, I created dresses that are making cocktails that are shooting bubble gum. And they are in Hart Ibiza, in Ibiza itself. Cirque du Soleil has a restaurant. So we know it's from theater, but they actually have a club in Las Vegas. They have a restaurant in Ibiza. And uh, these dresses are yeah, pouring you cocktails. They are uh, like uh, yeah, shooting with bubble gum. Um, like what you can see here on her backside, she has a peristaltic pump. And she has a little controller. So basically, um, the, the back piece is 3D printed, front piece is 3D printed. She has a little button. She's controlling it, and she's sur serving you an, um, yeah, a cocktail shot. Here you can see the pump. It's from Party Robotics. And um, um, yeah, that's the one that is pumping up the, pumping up the fluid. So that is something that I want to close down with, because af at the after party, uh, Whitney will be serving you drinks from her dress. So welcome to the future. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You guys thirsty? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. OK, so today we saw a lot of new and emerging technologies that really aren't so emerging anymore. Uh, we started off by taking a look at augmented reality with Ralph Osterhout here from ODG, uh, before moving into virtual reality with Ricard from uh, HTC and Zvi from NVIDIA, ending with smart textiles and EEG, and of course, the fashion tech designs by Anouk. And I hope that you get a sense as to how these parts can all work together in order to further your experience, in order to augment your world. And that's exactly what Augmented World Expo, or AWE, is all about, celebrating technologies that bring you superpowers. So give me a holler if you feel like you found a way to find your superpowers here at AWE today. <laughs> 